I've always loved science. My mother says that I was a pain in the neck asking questions all the time. My life's work has been about coming up with mathematical and physical descriptions of how plants work, how much water they need and how much they can grow as carbon dioxide levels increase. And I hope that this work will be relevant to feeding the world and maybe even to better dealing with climate change. Plants have had to evolve on the land ways of reducing water loss, but at the same time allowing carbon dioxide to come in for photosynthesis. We study the mathematical and physical and biochemical description of those processes. The models that we've developed originally were for the level of a cell, like an alga or even a chloroplast inside a leaf. It's very exciting when something that you originally imagine applying to a cell ends up being of practical advantage to people working at scales of a leaf or a canopy or the globe. Our models have enabled us to examine different varieties of wheat, for example, and work out which ones are the most water use efficient. And that's led to a breeding program for water use efficient wheat. Equally, the model tells us how to identify plants that should grow best when there's plenty of water around. It's greatly satisfying to see our models being used more widely in meteorological contexts, including global climate change, but more particularly recently in weather forecasting. The European Forecasting Service uses our models because they tell how vegetation is affecting uh, water, heat, momentum. You can see it makes me smile. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling. The mysteries that we're addressing now include why evaporation is going down around the world despite increasing temperature. Global dimming means less sunlight coming through in industrial areas, but that can't explain why it's going on in Australia and New Zealand. It turns out from the analyses that Mike Roderick and I have done that it's because of the wind speed going down. We call it global stilling. The wind speed has gone down 15% over the last 30 years. This is a great time to be a plant biologist. We need to feed a growing population and we need to feed them with less resources, less water, less nitrogen fertilizer, less phosphorus. It's a great challenge to young plant physiologists. I hope that they can build upon our work to create what I would call the second green revolution. I would love that.